college, uh, I think it was like my sophomore or junior year, I took a history course um, and it went to Paris, Brussels, Amsterdam, Copenhagen, and Hamburg. And it was through EF, so I was familiar with their trips. And I was talking about a bunch of trips that I had been on in my classes and some students asked if I would ever want to take students on that type of trip. So because I was familiar with EF and had been on a trip, I called EF and set up the first trip to Costa Rica. Um, I think that was in 2000. 10, with, and I went with Miss Kirby. So Ecuador um, had a service learning element to it where we would work in a community and give back and help them with something that they uh, needed help with, whether it was building a school or um, getting supplies for something. Um, and our project actually ended up being digging trenches so that the community could get potable water to their homes. So that was the big element for why we chose Ecuador. Also, we travel in February, so we try to choose a location that's much warmer than we are. Um, so I pretty much heard about the trip from my friends and from Jones and Campbell, like through crew, because um, by the time that, I signed up for it pretty late. So um, by the time that I did, a lot of my friends had already signed up for it and they kind of just pretty much persuaded me to join and I thought it would be like a fun and interesting experience to just go to another country with my friends. Um, so to get kids signed up, we make a lot of announcements, we have a website where we post all the information, uh, we send out emails and just try to get the, the word out um, the best that we can and then we have some parent meetings, some meetings with students. Um, but all of it is mostly on the website and through the EF company. I didn't really know much about like Ecuador as a country in general and like what the stuff like what it would be like down there in terms of like weather and people and landscape and stuff like that. So I kind of just went to the meetings really and just kind of listened to what um, they had to say about like in terms of what we would need to do to bring and stuff like that. And I kind of just looked it up myself just to see what I'd be um, getting myself into when I was in Ecuador. So basically, I was just ready for the trip to happen. So all I had to do was just pack my closet. <laughs> I went to TJ Maxx and we had a pack list that we had to go by and went to get everything I needed. And packed the luggage like 10 times and unpacked it and then packed it back up. Yeah, had a lot more than <laughs> I actually needed. Um, the biggest challenge was really the snow this year. We've had a few blizzards and so our first flight was canceled and then we had to kind of scramble things around and we left a few days later. Um, so that was a little bit of a challenge. But on the trip it was, um, it was really diverse elevations. So I think a lot of people had some challenges adjusting to the heat differences and the way that they were feeling maybe nauseous as we were climbing over mountains or going down into the valleys. Before the trip, we had a lot of snowstorms, so our flights got delayed, and that set our trip back three days. So we had to rearrange our whole schedule, and that kind of messed us up. Just basically getting used to the heat. <laughs> we came, we're, we're here, and it's like negative 20, and then we go there, and it's like, 100 degrees with 60% humidity and it was a big change from that but um, the people were great the food was great there was nothing the elevation oh, drink a yeah. lot of water yeah to drink a lot of water so the big chunk was the service learning so we were digging the trenches in the Amazon and we went on a bunch of hikes and uh, got to meet a bunch of community members went to different uh, farming areas and then um, when we went to the other cities, we went hikes on waterfalls and we visited the Cloud Forest, a community that made their own cheese and jam, uh, a textile place where they made uh, like scarves and blankets, uh, and then we did lots of shopping. We also visited many farms and families and 
got to know what it was like a day in their life. And we got to have some free time too with like shopping and visiting waterfalls. It was, uh, it was cool. Yeah. For me, my favorite part was the this one mm -hmm. waterfall that we went to. It was on the Rio Verde, so the Green River. It was with all this volcanic rock around it, and so it was really deep and it was the tallest waterfall in Ecuador and it had this really pretty staircase and we went over this uh, like drawbridge that was like kind of shaky so I thought that was a highlight for me. Um, definitely the fact that I got to speak a lot of Spanish and communicate um, with all types of people in all types of places and cities and areas. Um, I really like the fact that I was able to actually use um, the Spanish that I know to be able to communicate because I didn't really want to have to speak a lot of English because, I mean, we were in their country and Spanish is their language, so I wanted to be able to um, benefit myself and benefit them and kind of see how far I could go with communicating. So that was definitely a highlight that I was able to um, communicate as much as I did with the people there. I think seeing the community and helping them get water was my the highlight for me because it showed us how hard it is for something to us that seems so simple to get. would probably be we had to get in this like giant basket it fit like 10 people and you were and it was you would just go out to <laughs> the waterfall and it was like you're how many feet off the ground it was crazy and you got so close to it it was it was cool mine would be so cool? like the night hike or um digging trenches all the different insects we saw and animals sam camel's dying yeah <laughs> sam camel's dying <laughs> It was very different um, in terms of landscapes. I wasn't expecting to only drive like two or three hours and have the entire atmosphere and like the, the plants and the weather be totally different. Uh, we would be at the top of the Andes and they'd be very dry and it'd be kind of cool and then we'd go down into the Amazon and it was like 104 and lots of trees and life all around us. So it, was, it changed very quickly as we were driving throughout the country. Um, in some parts, yeah. In some parts, no. Um, I really liked, I didn't expect that we would um, see all the stuff that we did because I didn't think, um, I didn't think the country was going to be so different in terms of like, in one day we'd be in the jungle, but then in the next we'd be all the way up in the mountains in a totally different climate. So I, I didn't expect that we were going to be able to see um, the differing areas and environments and stuff like that. So that was like a really good, um, Kind of, not like a surprise, but it was kind of a good um, way to see all that we did. I really liked that, and that was kind of unexpected to me, so that was really fun. I was really surprised because I didn't think that we would have as much as we did have with the running water, and the hotels were like American, more American style, I guess. Not at Definitely all. Definitely not. I was expecting uh, just to like chillax. <laughs> Not expecting much, but we did a lot of work, and it was really um, educational, and I wouldn't, it was an, an amazing experience. I loved it. Um, for me, 
I've done a few service learning trips before, so I really wanted to provide that for students because it's really rewarding to be able to kind of live like the people in those countries do. Sometimes when you travel and you go to a city, you're in like a glorious hotel that kind of accommodates Americans and still gives you like an American feel. So I really appreciated how when we were living in Ecuador, we were living like we were Ecuador. Well, I haven't gone far. <laughs> But with the places I have gone, it was just purely a vacation. You were there for fun. Um, but this was, like I said, educational. Which it was really cool because we got to learn so many things. And I, like I said, I enjoyed it. Um, I went to China last year. And for me, that was more of a historical site and getting to know their culture more, not so much service learning. And Costa Rica was more of like a fun, adventurous um, going hiking, kayaking, and just doing so much fun stuff where this was more about the community and like helping them. Yeah. And you enjoyed this time more. <laughs> yeah, I would go back to Ecuador in a heartbeat. I definitely gained a better knowledge of how people live definitely in other parts of the world, not only just you know how people live in the Amazon and how they survive every day without the stuff that we do, but even in the big cities, they live a lot different than um, we do up here in terms of the resources that we have and the stuff that we're able to um, kind of have access to on a daily basis that even in their biggest cities, they don't have that. So I definitely gained um, a better appreciation and understanding for how things that seem like necessities to us, to people in a lot of other parts of the world, not just Ecuador, um, how they're kind of just not really important to them. So I think it was great that I was able to see that a lot of stuff that we think we need to live that we really don't need. To appreciate everything we have so much more. Yeah. Don't complain getting into a car, walking to school anymore. Yeah, they had a lot of challenges out in the Amazon and things that you wouldn't think about, like turning on the faucet, they have to walk like four miles to get water. It's we survived three days without our phones. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely an experience in a good way. Um, I thought like it's kind of a good experience to go somewhere, not only um, just to go to another country, but when you're going with your friends, that kind of like is an added benefit that you're able to not only experience a whole other culture and kind of like a whole new world, but you're able to do it with a lot of your closest friends. So that's a really good um, way to take in all the stuff that you did. So I really like the fact that it was quite the experience for us. Minga. Minga, definitely, which is a word that the community used. And um, it basically means working together, coming together, working, facing challenges. Uh, the trip overall was I think a great experience to live like you were truly from that country. We got to see how people in the Amazon versus the cloud forest and then even in the city, how they can be really close together, but their their life is very different. They, they only live like an hour away, but the people that are in the Amazon uh, have significantly less resources. They're living much more on the land where people in the city um, all have their iPhones and Wi-Fi right at their hand, kind of like we do here in Boston. So I think that was really cool to see how, just as America is, is diverse, we're just a little more spread out, and their country was, was almost the same way.